All right, now that you've um, seen a couple of examples of automata, and we actually went over mathematically working on uh, defining um, the last automaton without relying on informal definitions, um, let's um, look at formally define uh, what, what computation is. Just like the um, um, finite automata's definitions, the informal definition helped us kind of get a sense of how um, the machine worked, and the state diagram was helpful. Uh, but the formal definition um, of the machine was precise. It resolved any kind of um, ambiguities that um, may have occurred in the informal description and the look at the um, design or, or rather the state diagrams. And especially the formal definition helped us defining something that we couldn't really create a formal diagram or an informal state diagram for. And that was the last um, automaton that we designed. So now let us um, look at formally um, defined computation. In the simplest case, when your computation can be done by a finite automata, here is how we formally define it. Let first m be a five tuple that formally defines a um, finite automata. Um, or a finite automaton, rather. So let M be the sequence, a five tuple, of Q, sigma, delta, Q sub zero, and F. And let W be a string of symbols W sub one, W sub two, sub two, all the way to W sub N, where each of the W sub I's is a member of the alphabet sigma. Remember, sigma was a set of symbols. Then we say M accepts W, or the machine accepts the string, if there exists a sequence of states R sub 1, R sub 2, all the way to R sub N, for every R sub I from the set of states Q, such that these three conditions will meet. R sub 0 to be equal to Q sub 0, or the start state. Sigma of R sub i, in fact this ha should be sigma, that's a typo, or, or rather delta. Delta of R sub i comma W sub i plus 1 is equal to R sub i plus 1. And R sub n is a member of F. Now, this is a formal definition. As you see, it's completely precise. And now I'm going to go and explain every single bit of this definition for you so that you exactly see what's happening. And then we'll go over an example. So we first design or define our form finite automata. Finite automatas a, are, are, are five tuples. So we have a set of Q. That's the set of our states. We have a, a finite set. We have a finite set sigma. That's the, the finite set of our alphabet symbols. We have delta, which is our state transition function. We have Q sub 0, our start state, and F, a set of accept states. Then we have a string. A string is composed of a bunch of elements, a bunch of symbols, and each symbol must come from the alphabet. So we have a string W, which is W sub 1, W sub 2, all the way to W sub n. So basically, if you chunk a bunch of symbols from your alphabet together in the sequence, that will make your string. So we have that, and so this condition satisfies that each W sub i belongs to the original alphabet so that our machine wouldn't get confused. Then we say that the machine accepts the W if we can find a sequence of states. So each R sub i is a state which belongs to the Q. If we can put a bunch of these sequences together, that will satisfy these conditions. The first state to be the start state. The last state to be the member 
of the accept, set of accept states, meaning that we start from start state and we end up in one of the accept states. And we use the transition function to move from one state to another. So if the current state is R sub i, and the symbol we're reading is W sub i plus 1, we go to state R sub i plus 1, which means that here's our sequence. Our sequence is W sub 1, W sub 2, W sub 3, W sub n, um, sub, let's, let's do W sub 4, to W sub n minus 1, and finally W sub n. So if this were my W, and then in fact, I start at Q sub 0, so this is R sub 0, which is equal to Q sub 0. Then, upon seeing W sub 1, I go to R sub, sub 1. So if I'm in R sub 0, and I see W sub 1, I go to R sub 1. And then, upon seeing W sub 2, I go to R sub 2. Upon seeing W sub 3, I go to R sub 3. Upon seeing W sub 4, so when I'm in state 3, I see W4, I go to R sub 4. And I keep doing that rather minus 2. And finally, when I'm in R sub n minus 1 and I see R sub uh, W sub n, I end up at some state R sub n. Now, this is important. If this state is a member of accept states, then I say that the string w sub n is accepted. Right? Now, if that the r sub n, the last state, was not a member of the accept states, then that string will be rejected. And this is the formal definition of what a finite automata's computation does. It starts, it goes through a set of sequences. And at the end, after it sees the last symbol, it ends up in one state. And it, we say that the automata accepts that sequence of, of symbols if that last state is a member of a finite, finite state set. If it's not, then the automata uh, rejects the last, um, the, the, the entire string all together. So then again, formal definition of computation goes something like that. Let M be a, a, the automaton. Let W be a sequence of symbols, where each of the symbols from, comes from the alphabet. We say that M accepts the string W if there is a set of states such that the first state is the initial state or the start state of my automaton. The last state belongs to the F, which is the set of accept state of my automaton. And that at each state, upon seeing the next symbol, we go to the next state. Right? So, so this um, condition number one guarantees the starting. Condition number two guarantees the movement rules. And condition number three guarantees the acceptance. There is nothing ambiguous in this definition. Every single detail is spelled out and we are very happy, although the definition is kind of complex looking, um, that this um, will be a complete formal description. Now, when we have um, the uh, machine M recognize a language W, and we go over and find all of the languages W um, that machine recognizes and make a set of them, then or, or rather strings. Then we say A 
is the set of all W's such that the machine M accepts them, then M will be, or rather A, will be the language of M. We talked about this last time. Now, the next definition that we have here is the definition of um, a regular language. We say a language is regular if some finite automata recognizes it. So, um, so th this next definition will, be, will become an important definition for us, and that is the definition of a regular language. And let me just write it down up here. Now that we have the definition of computation set, we say that language A is regular if some finite automata recognizes it. So this definition will become a binding factor for us that binds finite automata to regular languages. So according to this definition, if we design a fi finite automata, then the language that is the set of all the strings that it accepts, that language will be from this point on called a regular language. We'll see later on in this class that there are some languages that are not regular, which means that there are some languages that no finite automaton can accept them. And then if we wanted to create computations for them that formally recognizes those languages, we would have to come up with these other different kinds of automaton. Uh, pushed on automata and Turing machines are examples of those computing com computational devices that accept non-regular languages of one form or another. So now let's go over um, an example and let's take a look at the M sub 5 which was the machine that we designed earlier that would accept um, the set of strings that were um, that were um, that the, who, in which the sum of all the symbols from the last reset button were um, mod, uh, 0 modulate 3. So, if you remember that machine, it looked something like this. It had a state Q sub 0, which was also its um, accept state and initial state. Then it would go to um, Q sub 1 if it saw a 1. And then from Q sub 1, it would go back to Q sub 0 if it saw a 2. Or a reset also with a zero or a reset it will go back to Q sub 0 and then um, from Q sub 1 it would go to Q sub 2 with a 1 and then from Q sub um, 2 it would go to Q sub 0 with a 1 or a reset, and then with a 2 from Q sub 2, it would go back to Q sub 1, and with a 0, it would stay either in Q sub 1 or Q sub 2 if it were in one of those two states. So this was my machine. Um, oh, and also I forgot um, Q sub 0 and 2. We'll take it to Q sub 2. So this was my um, my finite automata there. Um, that would accept all um, the, the set of all the strings where the sum of the symbols after the last reset element was a, um, was a multiple of 3. So in here, let's uh, start with an example of W. Let's say that this W is the sequence of 1, 0, reset, and then 2, 2, and then reset, and then 0, 1, 2. 
let's see what happens with this uh, with this string q sub um, so um, so if we if we if we um, look at this string and we start the sequence r that is basically going to be r sub zero and then a bunch of sequences to r sub n for the last element and if this r sub n is also q sub zero if that was the case then we accept otherwise we'll reject the element let's see if such a sequence exists and this is exactly what the computation of a finite automata does it starts from, from q sub zero therefore meeting um, condition number one then it uses the delta transition to go from each r sub i to r sub i plus 1 by seeing w sub i plus 1. And then from that point, if the last set uh, state r sub n is equal to or, or belongs to one of to the set of finite states or, or, or uh, accept states, then the machine computes that language or rather recognizes accepts that language that that string otherwise it rejects so so for, for this we'll, we'll basically do this so we start at r sub 0 which will equate it to q sub 0 and then we use the delta transitions and remember our delta transitions were like this delta of q sub i and 0 is delta of q is q sub i delta of q sub i and reset is q sub zero. These were the definitions of the deltas that we did from the last example. And then delta of q sub i and um, one is going to be q sub i plus one mod three. And the delta of q sub i and two is q sub i plus 2 mod 3 okay so so we, we use this we go from so for each r sub j plus 1 we use the delta of r sub j and w sub j plus 1 from these guys to compute so we start from r sub 0 and then we see, so this is w sub 1, w sub 2, w sub 3, w sub 4, w sub 5, w sub 6, w sub 7, w sub 8, w sub 9. So we start from r sub 0, we look at w sub 1 is 1. So if we go and compute the delta of q sub 0. So for here, what I need to compute is to compute the delta. of q sub 0 and 1. Delta of q sub 0 and 1 is q1 mod 3, which is q3, q1. Q so this will take me to q sub 1. Then from here, I need to compute the delta of q sub 1 comma 0. The delta of q sub 1 comma 0 is q sub 1, so it stays in q sub 1 and so forth. So just to make this computation a little bit easier to see, I'm going to expand this to go through every single one of these. W sub 1, W sub 2, W sub 3, W sub 4, W sub 5. It looks like I'm <laughs> running out of space. So W sub 7, W sub 8, W sub 9. <laughs> Let's see if this works. So I'm going to start at Q sub 0, which is equal to R sub 0. Then what I'm going to compute here is I'm going to compute the delta of Q sub 0 and W sub 1. So W sub 1 was 1, 0, reset. 2, 2, reset, 0, 1, 2. Okay, so what is this? So this is delta 
of q sub 0 and 1. According to my transition function up here, up here, the q sub i and 1 goes to q sub i plus 1 mod 3. So this goes to q sub 0 plus 1 mod 3, which is equal to q sub 1. So I'm going to go to q sub 1. Perfect. Now I'm going to go according condition to condition number 2 um, of my computation. I'm going to compute the delta of q sub 1, comma. This is r sub 1. Um, Q sub 1, comma, W2, which is 0. So, according to, to this, um, so the delta of Q sub 1, comma, 0 is going to be equal to Q sub... Um, so, whenever you see Q sub i and 0, you stay in Q sub i, so it's going to stay in Q sub 1. Here, we're going to go in, in from Q sub 1, by seeing 0, we go to Q sub 1. Next, we're going to compute the delta of Q sub 1 and W3, which is going to be delta of Q sub 1, comma, reset. Whenever you see reset, you go back to Q sub 0. So this is equal to Q sub 0. From here, we're going to calculate the delta of Q sub 0 and W4, which is going to be delta of Q sub 0 comma 2. Delta of Q sub 0 i comma 2 is Q sub i plus 2 mod 3. So this is going to be del Q sub 0 plus 2 mod 3, which is going to be equal to Q sub 0. Q sub 2. So we go to Q sub 2. Then we're going to calculate the delta of Q sub 2 comma W2, W5. So this is delta of Q sub 2, comma 2, which is equal to the Q sub 2 plus 2 mod 3, which is equal to 4 mod 3 is 1, so it's going to be Q sub 1. So this goes to Q sub 1. Then we're going to do delta of Q sub 1, comma, W sub 6, which is going to be delta of Q sub 1, comma, reset, which is equal to, whenever you see reset, you go to Q sub 0, so this is equal to Q sub 0. So you go to Q sub 0. Then delta of Q sub 0, comma, W sub 7, which is delta of q sub 0 comma 0, which is equal to q sub 0. So this is q sub 0. Next, we'll do delta of q sub 0 and w8, which is going to be delta of q sub 0 and 1, which is going to be q sub 1. And finally, we do delta of Q sub 1 and W sub 9, which is going to be delta of Q sub 1 and W sub 9 is 2, which is going to be equal to Q sub 1 plus 2 mod 3, which is Q sub 0. So this element, the last state, is Q sub 0. Now we look at the last state. Q sub zero. Does it belong to F? Look up F, and yes, F for this finite automata is the set Q sub zero. Yes, it belongs to F, therefore accept. How about that? Now, here, although a complicated mathematical thing, we can see that um, how it is applied um, over examples in, um, in, in this particular case. So we have a 
string w that's composed of the w sub 1 through w sub n. And we have our finite automaton that we defined previously. The important part of this finite automaton was its um, transition function, of course. And, and of course, everything else, including its start state and end state. Then, according to the definition of the computation, the machine accepts a string if three conditions are met. And if any one of those three conditions is not met, then the machine rejects that string. The first condition was to start. So find a set of states um, that start in Q sub 0, that end in one of the members of F, which is the set of accept states, and that uses the transition function, as you see here, from each state over the next symbol from the string goes to the next state according to the transition function that I draw out here in this example. And so if, if we had a, another sequence and we, if we went through all this computation, as you saw here, and we ended up in um, Q sub 1 or Q sub 2 and the, as the last state, then that string will not be accepted. All right, perfect. So, so far, we've informally defined, a, or rather um, considered finite automaton. Then we formally defined them. Then we saw a couple of examples of some finite automata. And we saw what kind of strings they accept or not. Then we attempted to design a finite, finite automata. Um, and then we formally defined computation. And then by the formal definition of our computation, we uh, or comp computational model of finite automaton, we went through an example of those finite automata that we saw earlier. Um, and and we, we saw whether or not it accepts a string or, or, or not. Now it's the time for us to be able to design automata from, um, from scratch. So basically, if someone asks you to design an automaton, uh, they basically give you a string, uh, a language, and then they tell you, hey, I would like you to go ahead and design an automaton that accepts this language. What that means is that you are going to be given a set of strings. And this set of strings could be formally defined as a mathematical set or just an inf informal English-like language. And then you're asked to design the automaton that, uh, that accepts um, all of those strings. Or alternatively, design an automaton that recognizes the language. So the design is effectively a creative process. And um, there isn't, as such, um, a... Um, single recipe or way of designing um, um, automata. And basically the idea here is to put yourself in place of the machine that you're trying to design and see what you would what you would do and how would you would process the string symbol by symbol as symbols appear. And, and that way, you basically psychologically trick yourself into engaging your mind um, in the design process, and um, and that way you can you can come up with uh, with the formulation of the machine. So in the in this in this particular way that 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 um, Cypher's book uh, uh, book uh, calls reader as automaton method. Um, you basically suppose that you're given some language, um, and, um, and and then and then you want to design a set of states that go through a transition step by step at the appearance of each symbol from a string that belongs to that language, and then it ends up at a state that is an accept state. So. Um, so effectively, you put yourself in place of the machine, and then you look at you 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 start in the initial state, and then from that initial state, with the appearance of every single symbol, you move to a new state, and you keep doing this. Um, and what you do need to keep in mind is that after the finish of each process step. Or after you, you effectively you started from a state, you saw a symbol, and then you go to a next state. At that particular moment in time, which is every after every single step, you have to be ready to decide whether the symbols that you've seen so far 
belong to the language or not, and therefore to be ready to accept or reject the string at any given moment, because as your machine, you are, um, uh, you, 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 you can't predict whether or not the string is finished or not. So that's a capability that you don't possess with this machine. Um, and also, the amount of memory that you have is, is quite limited in that the string may be as long as a gazillion symbols long, but you only have a sheet of paper, so to speak, to, um, to, to decide on your computation. So these are the, 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 the um, factors that you need to keep in mind in terms of designing your automaton. One, you basically go through this, um, the, the steps that your machine will go through. You start from a, st a start state. You process each symbol one at a time. You can process a number of them all together, only one symbol at a time. And at the end of processing of each of the symbols, you must be ready to decide whether the language seen so far or, or the string seen so far belongs to the language or not. And this is the key question or the key important factor here. The string seen so far. That is at the core of the power of finite automata, um, automata and their limitations. So, in order to make our decisions, we must figure out um, what we need to remember about the string as we are um, reading it. And as I said, this is very, very important because we do not really have an infinite amount of memory to be able to keep everything um, in memory um, seen so far. So we'd have to basically come up with a way of coding the string that we've seen so far in a finite manner. Fortunately, there are many languages that um, f that you don't need to remember um, an unlimited amount of symbols to be able to recognize them. So you don't need the entire input uh, for a lot of languages, actually, um, to be able to remem re remember them. And these are, um, as we wrap up, the um, discussion of finite automaton in a couple of units, um, we will have a formal um, um, theorem on them and that that um, the and, and that these are called regular languages, and that um, there is an equivalence between regular languages, regular expressions, and finite automata. So in these particular languages, the important crucial information are the things that we need to remember. So, to give you an example, let's design a machine that works with the alphabet 0 and 1. So we have two symbols, 0 and 1. It's a binary language, binary alphabet. And uh, we want to create a finite automaton that recognizes um, a language, which is the set of all strings that have an odd number of ones. So, Let's design this machine. So what, what do we want to create? We want to create a, a, an automaton. Let's call it um, E sub 1. And we want the um, language of E sub 1 to be the set of all strings W such that um, w contains an odd number of ones. So this is the finite automaton that we want to design. We're given a language, language of all the strings that contain an odd number of ones. And of course, w is from um, the set 0, 1 star, which is all of the strings that can be produced from the language 0, 1. So this E sub 1, of course, is a finite automaton. So formally, it will be defined as a 5 tuple Q sigma delta Q sub 0 and F, 
where Q is the set of states, sigma is the set of our alphabet, both are finite sets, delta is our transition function, which is from Q cross sigma over to Q, Q sub zero is our state, start state, and F is our finite, uh, or, or, or our, the set of our accept states. So, how are we going to go about doing this? We can think of our finite uh, our machine as something like this. You start from the, the start state, and then you read each symbol, and then you count the number of ones that you have seen so far, and um, then decide whether that number is even or odd. There's one problem with this, um, with this way of thinking, is that as the strings grow, your count will grow. And the problem with keeping count is that at some point in time we run out of memory to store the number of ones we've seen so far. So a, I would call a naive approach would have been to count the ones and decide if count is even or odd. But as I said, the problem with um, keeping count um, is that we may have a lot of symbols in a string. And the problem is that we don't know how long the string is, so we can't really decide on how much memory we need. So this approach will not work. So this approach won't work because our memory is limited. And we can't we can't count. Another approach and probably a better approach is to effectively whenever we see a a symbol to represent whether that that added to the current number of ones we have, if it was a one, will change the number of ones from even to odd. So at every given state, we only keep track of just two things. We don't count, we don't add, we don't do anything. At every single state uh, uh, step in our computation, we just only remember if we have seen an odd number of ones so far or an even number of ones so far. In this case, we only need two states to be able to design this machine. And here's what we're going to do. We basically represent our states of a machine in two states, um, the even state and the odd state. The even state basically is whether the number of ones so far is, uh, is even, and odd is whether the number of ones seen so far Is odd. This is all we need to, to remember about this uh, the, the language here to be able to decide about accepting the language or not. So to do this, we basically have two states. Just to be probably a little um, neater. I represent two states here, the state even and the state odd. So even is if I've seen an even number of ones so far. Odd is if I've seen an odd number of ones so far. There's good news about this kind of representation, what I'm doing here. First off, when I start in the Q sub zero, I haven't seen any ones so far because I'm at the beginning of the string and I haven't seen anything. Therefore, the number of ones I've seen so far is even, right? I've seen zero ones, which means that that number is even. So my start state is the even state here. Now, if I'm at the even state and I don't see a w one, which means that I'm reading zeros, I am effectively staying in the state of having seen even ones so far. The moment I see a one, I flip state. I go to state odd. Because if I see one one, that means that I have an odd number of ones. 
Now, while I'm in the odd state, if I keep seeing zeros, I stay there because I have seen odd number of, I mean, um, odd number of ones so far. And the moment I see another one, I pop out of the odd state and go back to the even state. And this completes my finite automaton. It is made of two states. For each state, I have two transitions, one per symbol. And I have a start state. And I have an, 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 an end state as well, because or a set of uh, accept states, because this state odd is going to be my accept states. So this automaton A sub 1 is my five tuple. Q sigma delta Q sub 0 and F, where first Q is the set even, comma, odd. These are my states. The alphabet sigma is the set, finite set of 0 and 1. Delta is a transition function from Q cross sigma onto Q. Each pair of state and symbol takes me to a, set, to a state. Its initial state, Q sub 0, is even. And its accept state, F, is the set odd. And delta is this transition function. So delta is from Q cross sim sigma. Sigma was 0, 1. Q was even and odd. Even was the start state. If you see a 0, you stay in even. If you see a 1, you flip to odd. If you're odd and see 0, you stay in odd. And the moment you see in odd, you see a 1, you flip back to even. And this is all there is to it to design your finite automaton that accepts the set of strings that contain an odd number of zeros. So basically from this point on when we when we design finite automaton we start with one of the strings in the alphabet or rather we start with the or in initial state meaning that we haven't seen anything yet and then from that point for any symbol in the alphabet we create a new state and that new state represents what we have seen so far in relation with the machine that we're trying to design or the language that you're trying to recognize. And, um, and this will basically um, be one way to design finite automata. Okay, let's take a look at another example um, of um, an automaton that recognizes a language. In this example, I'd like to design an automaton, E sub 2, that recognizes the language of all strings that contain the string 001 as a substring. Still, my alphabet is the set of 0 and 1, and I'd like to design this new language. So, let's see how, I, how am I going to do this. So, I want to design E sub 2. automaton E sub 2 such that the language of E sub 2 is the set of all strings W such that W contains 0, 0, 1 as substring as a substring And of course, W is from the set of my sigma, which is my alphabet 0 and 1. So let's first go over a couple of examples of the, the strings that um, this, accept this language, this machine should accept. So it should accept a set kind of like this. It should accept a set that's kind of like this. It should accept, or string, it should ex accept this string. 
but it shouldn't accept, for example, this string. So this string should be rejected. This string should be rejected. This string should be rejected because it doesn't have <coughs> the um, the substring that we are looking for. So, as you would um, look at the kinds of languages that the kinds of strings that this automaton should accept, we will be able to kind of get a sense of how this machine computes or processes the strings. So basically, it's looking for the symbol 001, which means that the first, so, so here's the, the plan. So we are looking for this substring, 001. So this package is what is important for us, which means that while we are working, we start in an initial state, and we are looking for the first zero. Right? Which means that we just skip over all of the ones that we're seeing in the initial state. The moment we see a zero in the initial state, we go to another state, which is zero uh, seen so far. Okay? And in there, if we see another zero, then we go to another state, zero, zero seen so far. And then if we see a one, we go to another state, zero, zero, one seen so far, which basically is what we are looking for and we found it so the way that we design these languages is basically we go something like this we start in the initial state and then from there find the next state that gets us closer to accepting and we keep this process over and over for each sim for, for the symbols that get us for symbols that get us there and then when 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 we are done when we find the final state then we go through and repopulate the um, the automaton with the with other symbols. So this is this is one way that I, I'll, I'll design the machine. So we start in the start state. Okay, and this state represents none of the symbols seen so far. So we haven't seen any of the symbols that we were looking for so far. However, in this state, if we see one zero, then we go to a state that represents that we have seen one zero. So that's the zero that I was looking for. Then from there, if if I see another zero then I go to a state representing now that I have seen two zeros, two consecutive zeros that I was looking for. And then from there, if immediately after that I see another zero, I mean, and I see a one, then I have seen the string that I was looking for. which coincides with my accept state. And from that point, I'll stay in this state, whether I see a 0 or a 1. OK, so <clears throat> we start in the, in the start state, S which means that we haven't seen anything yet. If we see a zero, we go to Q sub zero, representing we've seen one zero. If we see another zero, we go to Q sub zero zero, which means that we've seen one, the second zero. And then from there, if we see a one, we go to Q sub zero zero one, which means that we have seen the whole string. And then we'll stay in the accept state because that's what we need to accept.
problem. Each of these states will have to have one transition arrow for zero and one transition arrow for one. That's what makes this machine a deterministic finite automaton. However, for states Q sub zero, zero, Q sub zero, and S, we only have one outgoing transition. We need to fix that problem. Let's start in the, Q, in, in the start state and try to fix this problem. In start state, for my zero, I have a, um, a transition. I don't have a transition for, for one. What should I do if I see a one when I'm in the start state? Now, look at here. I skip all the ones because it doesn't matter how many ones I've seen, that string should not be accepted. So I stay in the start state if the symbols that I'm reading are one. So I stay in here as long as I read one. The moment I read zero, I know that I've seen my first zero that I was looking for. Now, what happens if I'm in Q sub 0, which means that I've seen a 0, and then I see a 1? The moment I see a 1 here, it basically cancels out the string that I was looking for. So I start, I scratch that string, and then start back in my start state. So now I fixed the transition, the lack of transition over 1 for my Q sub 0. How about Q sub zero zero? What happens if I'm in Q sub zero zero, which means that I've seen two zeros so far, and then I see a zero, right? So if I see a zero, I just scrap that zero, and still I have seen two zeros, two consecutive zeros. So in this state, if I see a zero, I stay where 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 I am, because if I have two zeros and I see a third, I still have seen two zeros so far. So if I'm in this state and I see another zero, which means that I've seen two consecutive zeros. If I see another zero, I've seen two consecutive zeros. And I keep staying in this state for as long as I'm in. Now that fixes my, pro my, my, my machine. I have four states, S, Q sub zero, Q sub zero, zero, and Q sub zero, zero, one. For each of these states, I have a transition for zero and a transition for one. And this guarantees that I will end up in an accept state if I, if I see the sequence of zero, zero, and one. And it, if it exists anywhere in my language, uh, that, that, um, um, that or, or in the string, that string will be accepted. And this language, effectively, then, is a regular language. So the language of all strings that contain um, 0, 0, 1 is regular, because according to my tra definition of regular languages, um, there is an automaton, a finite automaton that accepts um, it. Okay. Now let's let's also now we I'm not done yet. I need to, to form formulate my finite automaton. So finite automaton E sub two is a five tuple Q sigma delta um, Q sub zero and F where Q is the set of S, Q sub 0, Q sub 0, 0, and Q sub 0, 0, 1. Sigma Sigma is the finite set of my alphabet symbols. Delta is a transition function from Q cross sigma over to Q. Um, Q sub 0, the start state is S. And the set of my accept states is the set of Q sub 0, 0, 1. And finally, my delta is this function that goes from S, Q sub 0, Q sub zero 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 and Q sub zero zero one over the symbols zero and one. So S over zero goes to Q sub zero over one stays in S. Q sub zero over zero goes to Q sub zero zero and over one goes back to S. Q sub zero zero over zero stays in Q sub zero zero and over 1 goes to Q sub 0, 0, 1. And Q sub 0, 0, 1 will stay in Q sub 0, 0, 1 
where both symbols 1 and 0. And this is the formal definition of a finite automaton that recognizes the language of all strings that contain substring 001 as a substring.